Now the third surah of that subgroup. Surah Al-Duha. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa Duha wa Layli iza sajaba wa Daaka Rabbuka wa ma qala. Wa Lalakhiratu khayrun laka bin al-Ula wa Lasawfa yu'tika Rabbuka fatarda. Sadaq Allahu al-Azim. This surah has an event behind it in the background. That is, when the wahi started coming to Prophet ﷺ, after a number of wahis, then there was a sudden cessation of wahi. Jibreel is not coming. And Muhammad ﷺ, till that time, had developed such an intense love for wahi. He became dejected, sorrowful. Let me use the modern word, depressed. And this depression of his reached the level of suicide. Suicidal tendencies. Even today they say, this is the biggest sign of depression. If depression reaches that level, then it must be treated. Otherwise, shorter than that, go on with, with it. You can go on, continue. He himself says, several times this idea crossed my mind. I should mount, ascend a mountain and throw myself down. So much grieved. What has happened? Allah has become angry with me. I have offended him. Has he left me? There is a saying in Persian, Ishqasto hazar bad gumani. When there is love, then you will soon become suspicious. Maybe my beloved is angry with me. The more you love, the more is this possibility. So that was the condition in which this surah came. And he said that Umm Jamil, the aunt, Paternal aunt of, no, yes, yes, paternal, the wife of Abu Lahab. She said, Oh Muhammad, it seems your Satan has left you. She was rejoicing. Now he has to, to add injury to insult, insult to injury. He, was, he had to listen to these things also. In that condition now this surah is coming. And these two surahs, Suratul Tuha and Suratul Inshara, they have been fully understood only by the people whom we know, whom we call the mystics, the Sufya, although I don't like this term. They have understood these feelings within you. And they are, in these two surahs, Allah is talking to His, with His messenger at a very, very personal level. Very personal, very close. <coughs> by the morning brightness, and by the night when it is still and calm. Your Lord has not forsaken you, nor is He displeased. Now the oaths and what is the connection between what is the muqsam alayh? On what the oath has been taken? Oh, Muhammad, you see, there is a difference between night and day. But both are essential. Can anybody say that night is not necessary? This life in this world would cease to exist. Day is also necessary. Night is also necessary. So the coming of E is also necessary. And some pauses and some delays and some cessation is also necessary. So that you develop. Now there is <coughs> generally people who have some creative role in the world, creative role, who create something new. They have this experience. At times they say, mood off. Eh? But what is it, this mood off? Even they can't explain. At times they are very active. 
At times there is inshrah. And at times it is inqibaz. As if something, you know, has shrunk in your chest. Or as if your chest has widened. These cycles normally go on among the more intelligent people. But you know the cycle, if it remains within certain limits, it's okay. If the amplitude increases, then it is disease, mental disease. Depression and many, many activity going to the top, mania, and this depression. But you know, in the working of this world, you have to have these two. Ghalib says, now I apologize to brothers who don't know Urdu, especially Urdu of Ghalib. Rukti hai meri taba to hoti hai rava aur. After each cessation, internal cessation, when I come out of that in qibaz or depression, now I have a fresh activity, enhanced activity. My taba becomes very, you know, active. Rukti hai meri taba, but there is a time when I feel this, some stop, something has stopped. I can't say, I can't say poetry. Something has stopped in me. But then suddenly, now when I say, then that is the best poetry. So this is the wisdom of this cessation. This temporary cessation of Wahi doesn't mean that your Lord has forsaken you or He has been displeased with you. No, no, no. Now these words are also denoting to the same phenomenon. Akhara ula, akhara ula. With every cycle, the coming cycle will be much better for you than the preceding. And the final, the akhara, the hereafter, will be much, much, much more better for you than this, this world. So it can be, it has been transferred in both ways. Every coming moment of your life will be better for you than the preceding one. And the final future, and that is of hereafter, is surely very, very, very much better than this world. And very soon, your Lord will give you all and every good in such an abundance that you shall be well pleased. Don't be disappointed. Continue your struggle. The same thing. And now in three ayat of this surah, three very important features of the life of the Prophet before the start of Wahi. Alam yajid ka yatiman fa'awa Look to your past, O oh, my beloved servant and bondsman. Look to your past. Did he not find you an orphan and then gave you shelter? You were born after the death of your father. First shelter was the mother. Second was the grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. Third was the uncle Zubair. Very few people know that between Abu Talib and Abdul Muttalib, there was the elder son, Zubair. Then when he also died, then you know, the guardian was Abu Talib. So he gave you most kind, most loving. All cared for you, all loved you. Alam yajid ka yatiman fa'awa. وَمَجَدَكَ ضَالًا فَهَدَا And found you in search of guidance. Ball means someone who is still searching for the guidance, searching for the truth, seeking the truth. Or someone who was on the right path, but by only mistake he has gone wrong. Not due to any bad intentions. 
ان صورت الفاتحہ بھی ہے غیر المغدوب علیہم و رضا اللہ المغدوب علیہم آر دوز ہو ڈیو ٹو دیر بیڈ انٹینشنز دے ٹرن ٹو دی رونگ پاتھ سو دے ہیڈ دی ریتھ آف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ اور تم اینڈ دی موسٹ گلیئرنگ ایگزامپل فرم امنگ دی پیپل آف دی بوک آر دی جیوز بڈ دی ادر ون دی کرسچنز دی انٹینشن واز ناٹ رونگ ورحمانیت اب ابتدا ہوا ما ختمنا علیہ ملا تغار ازوان اللہ It was excessive virtue in them. Excessive virtue. That took the form of Rahmaniyah. So they are ballin, not maghdubi alayhim. So ball means a person who either by mistake has come on the wrong path. Not due to any bad intentions. Or he is still searching for the path, for the right way. And ball in Arabia, this term is applied to person who is in extreme love for someone. وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًا فَحَدَا And he found you. He was in search of truth. What far you were going to the cave of Hira? Staying there for several nights and days? What far? He didn't belong to any religious group. He was neither, neither born a Jew or a Christian. And you know this idolatry and worship of idols, absolutely it was impossible. Repugnant to him from the very beginning. So what was he doing over there? Intense thought, meditation, contemplation. What is this? What is this universe? Who am I? Where from have I come? Where am I heading? What is wrong? What is correct? And why is this injustice in this world? Oppression? Why this exploitation? Why these inequalities? What? All this thought of a person having a deep psych, deep philosophical, you know, mind. And at the same time very intensely Right-minded person. What is this? So then we, we found you searching for the truth and good. And then we guided you and our angel came to you and the revelation started. And number three, chronologically it was prior to this. But this is the rhythm of the surah by which you know the sequence is changed. And he found you Poor, destitute. So he enriched you. From the very beginning he was very poor. Abu Talib was a very poor person. And Muhammad had to work as a laborer to support him. He was, you know, tending the goats and sheep of Arabs, of the Makki Karshi people. Going out, working hard. And then when he was of some age, then he was working for some rich men as an employee, some rich trader. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the gate for him. The richest woman of Makkah and the noblest woman of Makkah, Khadija, he came to know of the virtues and qualities of Muhammad. He tried him. She tried him. He took a caravan of hers to Syria, came back. And she sent with him a slave of his most confident to watch him, see his dealing. And the report that he rece she received, then, you know, she was tempted to offer herself to be married to Muhammad Muhammad could never think of it. Many a chieftains, you know, of Quraysh had tried to marry her and she had refused. No. And now the proposal came from Khadija, radiallahu ta'ala anha. And then Khadija put all her wealth at the disposal of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You spend it wherever you like. I found a story in 
the tafsir al-kabir of Imam Ghazi. That once the Prophet came, he, he had gone out and they came back, but he was very much sorrowful and grieved and he lay, lay down, taking a blanket something over him. And he asked, what's the matter? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I went out from Makkah and in that valley I found there is a tribe who have nothing to eat, no clothings, very poor, very poor, destitute people. And I don't have anything with which I can help you. Help them. She said, okay, get up and call such and such and such and persons of the Quraysh. Call them. Muhammad went to Allah sallam, brought them. In the meantime, she had made a heap of the golden coins, so much high that when Muhammad sat behind it, it covered him. And then he sa she said, all of you should be witnesses. I give all this to Muhammad sallallahu He is free to spend it anywhere he likes. He found you destitute, poor, needy. And he made you and wished you. So now, three commands. As for the orphan, don't oppress him. And as for the beggar, or the questioner, sai, two meanings. Somebody comes to ask a question from you. He's also beggar, beggar of knowledge. Somebody is asking for some dollars or some money. He is beggar. But don't be harsh to any questioner, any beggar. Sai la falatanar. Wa ma bi ni'mati rabbika fahaddis. And as for the blessings of your Lord that have come to you, Proclaim them. Announce them publicly. Now this has a vast meaning, you know. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with, you should say, my Allah has blessed me with this thing. My God has blessed me with this thing. That is why the Prophet used to say, although he was very humble, very humble, very humble, no haughtiness ever touched him. Ana Sayyidul Adam Bala Fakr. But he had to say this. I'm the Sardar or the chief of all the progeny of Adam. But I'm not saying it with Fakr. No. And so on. Musil to be robbed. Uti to Jawam ul Kalim. And so many things of that type. And the second meaning is that the biggest blessing on you is this Qur'an. You convey it, <coughs> proclaim it from the rooftop. Let it be known to the people. Propagate it.